Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so we will be talking about a potential tropical cyclone 2, which is expected to become a tropical storm. We have a lot more tropical storm warnings that are in place and many areas will be impacted by this. And we'll also be taking a look at the other two disturbances as well as conditions across uh, the Western Atlantic. And so before I go into details, Okay, so first things first, we are taking a look at this five-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And so there we have our three disturbances. Uh, we have Invest 95L, that is the disturbance highlighted in orange over in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. In the southeastern Caribbean, we have what is still a potential tropical cyclone 2, likely to become a named storm. And then we have that other disturbance, which is highlighted in yellow, a tropical wave that is going to be approaching the Caribbean and so let's first talk about Invest 95L so here is it on satellite and we're seeing that the system is not really organized right now however it might have a slight window of opportunity throughout the day to get in shape and become a brief tropical depression before it makes its way into Texas by tonight going into tomorrow morning and so uh, regardless though this is going to be bringing a lot of rainfall to persons that are are along the Gulf Coast of Texas and even further inland as well as the system is going to be accelerating in. So uh, please be prepared for all that heavy rainfall that is ahead for you guys uh, that are in Texas. And so next let's go ahead and talk about that other disturbance. So that one there is given a 30% chance to possibly develop into a tropical cyclone and uh, this chance is low at this time and imminent development is not expected. It might develop on approach to the Caribbean. However, once it moves into the Caribbean, conditions will get pretty unfavorable and we'll talk about that more into detail later on in this video so uh, we might see some development of the system here but regardless it's likely to bring a lot of rainfall to portions of the lesser and leaves maybe as we're going to be heading into this weekend so just as we, uh, we have what is still a potential tropical cyclone to head in uh, westward away from the lesser Antilles, here we have another wave that is going to be moving through and might bring along with it some uh, inclement weather conditions and so as I speak about it, let's go on to it. So here we have it on satellite and we're seeing that the system here is actually uh, pretty disorganized, although it is resembling a tropical storm, but there is no close center of circulation for it to be a defined tropical cyclone. So uh, this thing here is also moving pretty quickly and that is helping to uh, prevent that close center of circulation from actually forming. And so looking at the cone of uncertainty from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, current sustained winds are 40 miles per hour and the system is accelerating westward at 30 miles per hour. So it is almost literally moving as fast as the maximum sustained winds within the system are. So this thing here is moving pretty quickly and this reminds me so much of Elsa last year because Elsa developed in the late part of June going into early July and the system was moving so fast it was shearing itself and keeping itself from intensifying so this is really uh bringing me back to last year when elsa was out there and so we see that we have those blues and those yellow spots so the blues they indicate tropical storm warnings so quite a bit of areas are under a tropical storm warning so a tropical storm warning is in effect for islas de margarita coche and cubagua Bonaire, curacao Aruba, which are basically the ABC islands, the coast of Venezuela from the peninsula de Paraguay, now westward to the Colombia-Venezuela border, including the Gulf of Venezuela, as well as the coast of Colombia from the Venezuela-Colombia border westward to Santa Marta. And so we have a tropical storm watch and that is in yellow. It's in effect for the coast of Venezuela from Pedernales to Cumana. So tropical storm-like conditions are likely affecting these areas already. And so guys, uh, potential tropical cyclone 2 it's likely to intensify into a tropical storm but uh, it's really going to be struggling to 
uh, intensify because of all of the land interaction and that is really going to be messing with the system but once it makes its way into the uh, south caribbean where it really has no interferences it's likely to intensify but uh, now the national hurricane center is not expecting that it will intensify into a hurricane but rather a strong tropical storm with maximum winds of 70 miles per hour and so the reason for this is likely due to all of the land interaction as well as the fact that this thing here is not a slow moving system so it doesn't really have any time to sit around and get in shape and intensify much uh for example that gulf disturbance there that is moving pretty slowly it's been lingering there for quite some time meanwhile with this system here it's moving at a very rapid pace 30 miles per hour and so let's see what's going to be happening with it but uh this thing here is not expected to dissipate over central america when it makes landfall in nicaragua and then redevelop in the pacific the cone here is just showing that it is going to be moving across as a tropical storm and not losing its status so this is still likely to become bonnie but it's just that it does not has a closed center of circulation right now all right let's go ahead and take a look at conditions and so we are seeing that ocean temperatures are very warm there's no question about this because things are getting warmer as a matter of fact and then now let's go ahead and take a look at the dry air so we see a bit of dry air ahead of uh ptc2 but that isn't likely to be too impactful on the system however let's go ahead and take a look at the wind shear and so uh the gfs is expecting that things will be pretty favorable in the south caribbean we're seeing those blues greens very light yellow shades with which indicate that the wind shear is um, mainly favorable to enable intensification. However, the orange going to the red, that indicates stronger shear. And so as we head to Saturday on the 2nd of July, when uh, PCC2, uh, likely to be a storm at that time, is going to be making its way over into Central America, we're going to have an increase in shear across most of the Caribbean. And so for that other wave that is out there, it is going to be encountering all that shear. So ahead of it, it's not likely that we will see much much intensification because uh, this shear is really going to be preventing it from becoming anything significant and then euro is in agreement with this by Saturday here we have all of these reds and oranges that we're seeing that indicate strong shear and remember the system is expected to move into the Caribbean so it's going to be encountering all this shear which is going to try and just rip it apart so uh, the best chance I would see for development is well this on approach to the lesser Antilles but afterwards that that shear is going to be a hindrance and again if you're in any of the areas under watches or warnings right now please uh, ensure that you're taking all the necessary precautions and staying as safe as possible and do not take any unnecessary risks and so guys that is really it for this update video on the tropics and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be otherwise